Well, it's a great day today for another 30 minutes of Point of View. I'm Pastor Josh Barnes, and this is my brother, Justin Barnes. And this is the show where we break things down and look at whatever the issue is, mostly political, but we do other issues too, um, even theological issues, whatever. But we look at everything from a biblical point of view. We start with the assumption that the Bible is true, which isn't really much of an assumption. It's sort of it's just a logical progression of thought from the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. We can prove that Jesus rose from the dead, and since he rose from the dead and he said the Bible was true, that kind of confirms that he was telling the truth. And if the Bible is true, we can't be right about any of the other issues unless we look at them with the idea that the Bible is true. If we disagree with the Bible, we're wrong <clears throat> about whatever the issue is. And uh, we've been talking a lot lately about government things, vaccines, mandates, all those things. Oh, I said the word. We're going to be taken down. <laughs> but great. Yeah, just... Yeah, just throw the whole video out. Anyway, we'll probably be okay. We'll get away with it for a little while. Uh, but today, we're going to switch back over to the other My Body, My Choice issue. And uh, Justin has some words for us on uh, the situation out in Texas, I think. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to talk about this one. Um, there's just been a lot that has happened on this whole abortion front over the past week uh, or so. As as I'm sure everyone listening is aware, Texas passes this heart, heartbeat bill um, that would ban abortion after a heartbeat can be de detected, which usually is, uh, I think, as early as three to four weeks or five to six weeks, somewhere in that time period. Um, I think it's it's usually closer to six weeks, but whatever. Um, and, and everyone just lost their ever-loving mind. Just lost it out. And, and there was a host of, of different responses that I think are worth um, just considering. Um, first of all, the, the very same day, I think within a couple hours of when President Biden was mandating um, with his divine authority that he apparently has uh, leveled up and achieved, um, he is man when he the, the the same speech where he's mandating. Okay, if you're an employer with a hundred employees or or whatever, you have to uh, have them all uh, get the uh, the Fauci ouchie, as some people call it, um, or they have to prove a negative test every week. Same same day, within a few hours of when that speech was given, Kamala Harris makes the my body my choice argument against the Texas bill. And says it is. Let me let me see the specific wording. She said it was patently unconstitutional. Now let, let's clear something up here. They're going to say it's patently unconstitutional because Roe versus Wade invented a constitutional right to abortion that doesn't exist in the Constitution. It's not there. You won't find it. Um, there's nowhere in the Constitution that says you have the right to murder somebody. It's not there. But Roe versus Wade has established this, this constitutional right that isn't in the Constitution. So it's not unconstitutional. It goes against Roe v. Wade potentially, but that's a whole different story. But but Kamala Harris makes this whole big point about it's women's bodies. They have these in, these incredibly tough decisions they need to make concerning their medical health and what they want to do with their bodies. And this is their decision and they shouldn't be forced to make this decision one way or the other. My body, my choice. So I could see that argument being valid against the president, but the... My body, my choice argument is is like whenever I hear it, it's like everyone who is pro-choice is when when you engage the discussion, they're just putting their fingers in the ears and going la 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 la. I will not hear what you are saying. Um, we're not going to further this discussion at all. Why? Because if you've paid attention in good faith to anyone who is pro-life, you already know what the what the response is to my body, my choice. You do. I don't give a crap about your body. Do whatever you want with your body. I don't think you should be forced to get pregnant. 
Your body, your choice. Totally down with that. But you are not allowed with your bodily sovereignty that you um, so value. You are not allowed to kill someone else. It's a very obvious thing. If even, even if you've never talked to a pro-life person, the my body, my cho choice argument doesn't work with abortion. And you know it. Because that's not what we care about. Even if you want to accuse, well, they're not pro-life, they're just pro-birth. Either way, we're still talking about somebody else's body. We're not just pro-birth, but in this situation, even if you wanted to do with that straw man argument, even that, you know, my body, my choice doesn't work. But Kamala Harris trots this out as if it's uh, incredibly compelling. Here's the thing. If we're going to use my body, my choice, um, the vaccines definitely... Uh, tend to, to be more persuasive on that one. But that's not that's not all we've heard on it. We've heard that the bill is uh, extremely racist. And I, I have to imagine that that takes some real mental gymnastics. Um, for example, I think it's in New York City where last statistics I heard, you were more likely if you were a black baby in your mother's womb. Um, that was like the most lethal place you could be. You had, I think, a greater than 50% shot of not ever getting born. You, you had a huge chance of dying because your mother decides to get you butchered by an assassin. So, let me get this straight. The racist Texas bill, because it, it must be racist because it's going to disproportionately affect uh, black people because I think... If you at least, I don't know how it is specifically broken down in Texas, but I think disproportionately in America, black people do have more abortions. So it's racist, right? Let, this, this white supremacist bill. What white supremacist movement in history, what, what ethnic of any kind supremacist movement took legal action to ensure that more of the race that they hated would be born, would exist. What, when has this ever, what are we, okay, so, so the idea then is that the white supremacists are completely incompetent, so you shouldn't be afraid of them, because what they're doing is actually making way more black people live. We're talking tens of millions of more black people would be alive if these white supremacists had their way. Is that really your argument? So that's silly. But what, what I thought was pretty interesting was all the people who found biblical morality a lot more appealing all of a sudden. What do I mean by that? Well, <laughs> I, I can't be the only person who's, who's seen Twitter. And all the different responses of people saying, well, men. And in fact, I have a friend on Facebook. Let me see if I can pull this up because you're going to have people all over Twitter and Facebook and and even YouTube and all that. Mostly it's, it's feminists who are going to say, um, you know, if you're going to, uh, if, if you're in support of this bill, then you, you should this, that, and the other. I, I'm trying to see if I can find this. I don't think I will. Um, give me one second. I, I don't think I'll find it. But basically, there's been a lot of posts of, well, if you think that stopping a woman uh, should uh, from, from having abortion is right, well, then you shouldn't have sex with a woman unless uh, she wants to get pregnant. Um, you shouldn't, uh, you know, just be having all this wild, unprotected sex. To which I say, I accept your offer. I accept. Fair trade. I'm good with it. Totally fine. I I, I will take that in a, <laughs> no pun intended, I'll take it in a heartbeat. Um, why? Because uh, that's how it should be in any good civilized society. It, it should be that a man and a woman um, get married and then... They, they have a family together, and they have children and all that. Um, if you're just going around sowing your wild oats, so to speak, 
Well, welcome to the Christian Morality Club if you want to rein that in. Because that's what we say. That's not going to hurt me. If It's funny, all the feminists saying, women, take back your power. Stop sleeping around with men. And I'm going, finally, something from the feminists that I can agree with. Now, granted, they're not going to agree with biblical um, anything else, but at least there's that when it comes to abortion. But here's the thing. Dementia-ridden elephant in the room that we need to address, and that would be Joe Biden, because he he addressed this. Um, Joe Biden, devout Catholic, as you know, um, he he most certainly believes in the uh, you, you know the the thing. Uh, very very devout follower of the thing. And Joe Biden has had every position under the sun on every issue, it seems. And you can go back a few years and find that he said that he was willing to accept De Fide, De Fide, De Fide uh, which is by faith, but the, the doctrine of the Catholic Church that life begins at conception. He said, I wasn't, I'm not willing to legislate that and force my beliefs on other people, but I accept by, by faith the Catholic Church's teaching on this. And then last week, or, or recently at least, he said, um, look, I know there's a lot of debate about when life begins, and there's some people that say it begins at conception. Um, I respect that. I think it's wrong, but I respect it. Granted, he doesn't respect it enough to let Texas go ahead and make their own laws. Um, no, we can't have that, but he respects it. He, he respects the people that he doesn't want to be able to determine anything about their lives. He respects you. Now go get the shot, you stupid idiot, and let your wife kill all of the babies. I respect you, but come on. But anyway, Joe Biden has now officially come out and said, hey guys, I'm not a Catholic. And by the way, I'm not a Catholic either. But I'm saying this man is pretending to be part of a religion now. And he is officially said, I disagree with something that the Catholic Church doesn't let you disagree on. So here, this is kind of a two-sided issue here. Number one, Catholic Church, what are you going to do about this? I've, I've spoken to a lot of Roman Catholic people. I respect a lot of them. Um, guys like Mitch Paqua, I think, are, are very nice and very intelligent. Um, I disagree with them, but I, I don't, I'm not like a anti-Roman Catholic sort of bigot kind of person. But one of the arguments that Roman Catholics are going to use all the time is the unity that the church has versus the diversity of those who believe Sola Scriptura. And they're going to cite a wildly uh, inaccurate and debunked stat like 20,000 Protestant denominations. It's not true, but they're going to cite it and say, look, at, look, you guys can't agree on anything. Okay, uh, you can't get rid of a heretic president. So what are we going to do about that? So Catholic Church balls in your court here. Instead of just denying them communion, how about you, I don't know, excommunicate him. If you want to be taken seriously as having the authority and standing as the, the vicar of Christ with the Pope, you need to do something about this. Uh, if, if you want to have any sort of ability to say we have the one true unified church under the, the, the successor of Peter, you need to do something about this. But, but now let's go to the flip side here. Joe Biden says life doesn't begin at, at conception. Um, yes, it, it does. And, and you know how you can prove it? Uh, because if you look at what an abortion does, the very first thing that they have to do in an abortion would be to kill, kill the baby, either by um, poisoning it, starving it out, lots of different ways. Um, they get really creative in how they dismember children, um, but you have to kill it, which, by the way, means it's alive. Very basic. We don't even have to, I mean, you can go into the biology textbooks that show very clearly from zygote, which is the very first stage, from that very first stage, very much so a living human being. It's a living person. It is a human. It is innocent. 
And so you can't just kill it. That's pro-life in a nutshell. Um, but President Biden doesn't believe that things that need to be killed in order for a procedure to happen necessitates that they're not killed. They're, they're not dead. They're alive before that happens. Um, but here's the thing. You might be saying, well, yes, but... Um, but this doesn't make a provision, a special provision for rape and incest. Um, first of all, this law makes a provision that I wouldn't, to be fair. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to try to, you know, crap on the law or anything like that. I, I see merit to both incrementalism and all at once ism. <laughs> um, so the people like my approach here is, well, if the Democrats have had the approach of, uh, if you give us an inch, we're going to come back for a yard in the next session. I'm good with that. So Texas, this is take the inch. Let's go for the yard next time. Um, so I, I hope we go all the way and just ban abortion outright at some point here. But um, people say, well, it, it, it doesn't make provision for um, rape and incest. Um, yeah, it shouldn't. But but here's the thing. Tell you what, since I, I, I am willing to take this incremental approach here at first, um, are you willing to get rid of all abortion except for rape and incest? No? Then shut up. Because it's not an honest argument. You're trying to appeal to the emotions of people. Because, I mean, here's the thing. We all agree rape is a terrible thing. I am very much so in the let's give rapists the death penalty camp. Mainly because I believe in God's law. I am a general equity theonomist. So I believe rape should get the death penalty. Um, so I'm not trying to, uh, to, uh, tiptoe around the tulips when it comes to rape and incest is a consensual act. So I'm not sure what tragedy we're supposed to say outside of, well, the kid might have some defects, but are we going to say kids with defects just don't deserve to live? I think that's pretty egregious if you think about it for like mm, two seconds. So if you make the rape and incest argument and you're not willing to say, uh, that's that's the only abortion we should allow, um, then you're disingenuous. But even if we're going to go with this argument of rape and incest, if you're not willing to get rid of all the other abortions, totally, totally inconsistent. You're just trying to, to appeal to people's emotions. But in the cases of rape and incest, there's still no good excuse. You don't kill kids because their dads did something bad. You, you don't kill kids because they might have deformities. And... Absolutely, you don't kill kids because you don't want the consequences for your own actions. So, having covered the Texas bill and just a few different responses that I've seen, I want to bring Josh in um, and see, Josh, have you seen some of these responses from uh, Harris and Biden and, and people discovering that biblical sexual ethics might have some merit to it after all? Well, uh, in um, to their condemnation, I don't think that they see that it has merit. <laughs> I think they just want to get at people. They think that this is that this is a way um, to give your husband the cold shoulder until he will vote the way that you want him to vote, or or to give your, your significant other, or you know, or whatever. That, Most of them you know, probably aren't married. Yeah, exactly. So, but here. <laughs> The, the fact is exactly right, though. What, what they have unknowingly or just ignorantly stepped into is they've acknowledged that the solution to abortion this is not having sexual relationships with someone that you're not prepared to have a child with. Th this, is, <laughs> this is biblical sexual ethics. 101. <laughs> and this is this is what I forgot in my monologue, by the way, is so you're saying there is a choice. You're saying we have a solution and it doesn't involve killing anyone. That's that is a that is a great point. And it's because they don't want to make that choice that they say they should have the other choice. Now, the other choice is murder. This is um, is just fornication. So because they feel like they should have the right to choose to just sleep with whoever, whenever, however, without any, any thought about the fact that they could have a child from that relationship, um, because they have the right for that, they have the right 
to choose that, they should then also have the right to choose to murder the child that comes because they have the right to not have a chi child even though they're choosing that. And when they're taken away, when the, when the choice to take away the when when the choice for murdering their child is taken away from them the solution then becomes not having sex with anyone who they're not planning on having a kid with and we say there yeah yeah that's the point and i think this kind of gets to the bottom of why they want abortion so bad it's not that they want to kill babies although I, they just obviously don't care it's that they want to have unfettered unconsequential sexual relationships. They want to just be able to do whatever they feel like doing, whatever they feel like doing it without having to ever stop and think about the ramifications, the consequences of these things. And when the consequences come down the pike, they just kill them uh, because it's all about me and what I want to do. And it doesn't matter the fact that I created a child and murdered them. As long as I feel good, this is ultimately reveals the incredible evil and wickedness of the pro-choice movement just it's just beyond women's health which they want to paint it it's it's women's right to be completely immoral and have zero consequences and they're they're just betraying that fact yeah and and, and you can expose this with a simple illustration it's like okay so you want to engage in your base appetites, shall we say, because it's not like this is a, any sort of high and holy um, marital union in most of these cases. Uh, you want to engage in your basis appetites and not have to deal with the consequences of it. You want, you, And you're willing to kill somebody over the consequences. It's as if somebody said, I I want to eat all of the McDonald's because I'm, I'm really hungry and I'm just going to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And then someone comes along and starts making fun of you because you're fat. Which, by the way, I was a fat kid. <laughs> Very fat kid. And you guys made a lot of fun of me for that growing up, by the way. Still a little bitter. But say this person who just eats all the McDonald's, giving in to their basis passions all the time, becomes fat and doesn't want to suffer the consequences of getting poked fun at, so they kill the person who make fun of them. Are we going to say in a society that that's, that's acceptable? acceptable? Because... In principle, we are dealing with the same thing. I don't want to to have any consequences that I don't want for my actions that I have in 99 plus percent I have voluntarily engaged in. Therefore, I will kill someone over it. That's yeah. what we're dealing it's, with. And it's even worse than that, actually, because in, in your example, the person making fun has done something that has given them some amount of guilt. True, true. Where the person, the person being murdered in abortion, has had is completely innocent, and uh, yeah. So it, it's even worse than that example. And the, but that's a good example. Well, um, it's like you going and shooting up the McDonald's. I guess that's a closer one. Still not not a one to one, but yeah, than that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and but but you know the. The, the reaction from the left is, is, is interesting. Justin, prediction, what do you think is going to happen in Texas? Do you think that, this, that, that we can hang on to this and it can spread to other states? Other states have tried um, bills like this. Or do you think this just dies, goes to, goes to the court, they throw it out? What, what do you think? I want to be an optimist. Because I have seen so much progress made in this uh, field lately through people like uh, Apologia Church with End Abortion Now and the hundreds of churches that they're affiliated with that are that are saving babies' lives all the time. And they're introducing bills in Florida, in Arizona, I think in Pennsylvania and other places to outright ban abortion. Um, and they almost got it in Arizona had it not been for the pro-life industry, but I digress. Um My, my heart says that we should be optimistic here and that this is going to just keep going, going, and going, and, and we'll eventually win it. My head says it's probably going to get shot down because that's how it works. We appoint justices to do um, 
no no Supreme Court justice who actually wants to interpret the Constitution as it's meant to be would ever uphold Roe versus Wade. But I highly doubt because now there's precedent, uh, which apparently means more than the Constitution. I have a feeling it's probably going to get shot down. It's and ridiculous it's that the to, precedent thing keeps coming up too, because yeah. you know the, the the there is scientific understanding of this issue far more now than than there was when Roe versus Wade came out. So the idea of precedent when new information has come to light is i mean if if there was a, a scientific question as to whether whether the child was alive whether it was a, a biological human being um then you know yeah let a, a, each person make up their own mind but if there's now scientific certainty no question at all this is a human being then there has to be a different ruling now made i mean precedent whatever we're running out of time. Last thoughts, then we're going to go. Um, as much as as there's a lot going on around the world, I still very firmly believe this is the issue of our day. Yeah. Um, if we don't fight this with everything we've got, that this is the greatest evil genocide of millions of, of people, innocent people. Um, we've got to keep fighting this. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for joining us today. We want you to know and believe the gospel. We want you to be right about issues. Uh, you start with knowing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and uh, look, accept Christ as your savior, repent of your sins, but then believe the Bible and actually look at issues like the Bible is true. That's what Point of View is all about. Thanks for watching us and we'll see you next time right here. Are you tired of the same old snacks? Looking for something a little healthier than that bag of chips or candy bar? Even your average bag of trail mix these days is little more than peanuts, raisins, and candy coated chocolate. Not very healthy, is it? Allow me to introduce you to White Mountain Munchies. Made from 100% all natural ingredients, White Mountain Munchies combines unique flavors with nutritional value that will tingle your taste buds and strengthen and sustain your overall health and wellness. Eating good never tasted so good. From Maggie's Maple Madness to Hannah's Heavenly Harvest, Grayson's Getaway Goodies, and our limited edition Christmas blend, Jacoby's Jolly Jumble, White Mountain Munchies offers nutritious and delicious snacks that the whole family is sure to love. Pick yours up now through our easy to use online store at whitemountainmunchies.com. White Mountain Munchies, non-GMO when you're on the go.